Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Greetings again. I am so thankful for each one of you guys uh, that have watched these videos, that have shared these videos, that have went on to ShilohRelics.com because of these videos. You guys have made my life better and I certainly appreciate you. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting shell that most people don't know about. So we're going to share a little bit of knowledge today. On November 13th, 1855, there was a patent that was granted uh, to uh, Sawyer, and he had an artillery shell that's, that's pretty interesting. They make two versions of this one. They make a solid bolt, uh, which is just a hunk of iron that is covered by lead, and then they make this one, which is the shell version of it, meaning that it was had a cavity in it and it was meant to explode and rain down hell on the people you were shooting it at. The, <laughs> I'll tell you this story first, because I thought it was, it's one I'm, I'm thankful I made it through. Back in the early days of my shop, when you get artillery shells sometimes, they were still loaded. And I didn't have the money to get them drilled out. They cost 30, I think $30 at the time. A lot of people had remote setups that would drill them, flush them out and make them just a hunk of iron for you very safely. So people still do it, uh, but back then, I just didn't have the money to do it. So I would drill them out myself. I would take a drill bit, uh, some water and oil and do it very slowly. And it worked. I drilled out probably a hundred of them over the years. I got one of these and generally the iron is very, very thick on the side of them. So you can drill for a pretty good bit before you even get close to that cavity. So you put a lot of pressure on it while you're drilling it. <laughs> and that works great if the metal's that thick. These, about that thick. I'm sitting there and I've got it and I'm going like this and I put the pressure on it and all of a sudden the drill bit goes in and I'm like, oh my God. And, and then I thought, I made it, so I'm still here. I didn't drill any for a while after that because I was still a little puckered up on the fact that I did not know all of the factors in what I was doing and it was very stupid. I should not have been doing that. Uh, I should have spent the 30 bucks, but I made it through it. But the wall on these is very thin. Uh, they, they should have blown up fairly easily. Wasn't a lot of powder in it. I was surprised once I started flushing the powder out of it, there wasn't a lot of powder on the inside of it. But I digress. It has an iron core. On the outside of it, they put lead. And why would they put the lead? Because the lead is a softer material and when you're firing out of a rifled cannon, meaning that it has the lands and grooves in the barrel of the cannon, the lead can take those lands and grooves better and make it more accurate. And <clears throat> uh, it, it just helped it. It was actually a cool design. These things are neat because on the bottom of the shell, it actually has that 1855 patent like this. In the early days of the war, they sent these uh, Sawyer cannon to the Army of the Potomac. And Army of the Potomac was always the best, equ best equipped, best uh, looked down on the rest of the uh, uh, soldiers as second class citizens. They tried a couple of these and they took a pass on them as they say in the book. And speaking of the book, I, I got part of my information today from the 1993 edition of Dickey and George's uh, Field Artillery book. Good book if you can find it. It's been out of print and I talked to Pete a while back and he ain't reprinting nothing. So if you find one, you better buy it because it won't be reprinted for a while. But it's got uh, notes in there and it talks about how they took a pass <laughs> on them and sent them to the Western Theater. The boys down in the uh, bayous because that was where you ended up if they didn't. <laughs> if you weren't as high up on the totem pole, this one uh, is kind of cool because we know exactly who fired it and when they fired it. The, this one was recovered years ago in the area of Port Hudson, Louisiana. Port Hudson was a very important place on the Mississippi River. For 48 days, four, eight, for 48 days, the Union uh, artillery laid siege to Port Hudson before they finally surrendered. 48 days, they just bombed them with everything they had. Uh, it was it was hell. It was it was something else, but it, it worked and they got it done. But there was only one uh, battery 
at Port Hudson that fired these, so we know exactly who fired it. It was fired by Holcomb's Vermont Battery. Some boys from Vermont all the way down in Port Hudson, Louisiana, fired this one in 1863 during some part probably of that 48-day siege. This one, the lead is nice. You can actually see the rifling from the cannon on the side of the body. At the top, you see that some of the lead has just been ripped away. Now, what would cause that? It's because of the kind of fuse this thing we used. It, this is a picture of one that I, a fuse that I sold several years ago. It was actually on the cover of North South Trader Magazine at one time. A fuse of this condition can bring more than the shell itself because it's 10 times rarer, even though the shell is super rare. They say a uh, rarity of eight in the book, but I think it's, it's more scarce than that because you just don't see them. But the fuse is 10 times rarer than that. It'll bring as much or more than what the shell will in, in this condition. But that thing sticks so high and it had a lip that went around the edge and it ripped the lead off the top of it, which that's pretty cool. Cause look at the, the center cavity. This is the hole that goes down into the body of the, of the shell. And it just ripped the top part off, which is if you don't understand the story behind it, it's like, eh, that looks kind of weird. But if you understand the story on it, that's pretty cool because can you imagine the force that it took to rip that lead off the body of that piece. It's something neat that there's a story behind the story, behind the story, behind the story. And I like those extra stories. It makes things special to me. Uh, what did I forget? Holcomb's battery? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, as far as where they were fired, there's only a few of them that were fired. They didn't use these cannon much. They fired them uh, when they first got them at Fredericksburg and at Fort Fisher for the Army of the Potomac. Then they sent them over. Port Hudson is one of the places that you find them from. But it's a it's a neat shell. Go on to the West Shiloh Relics .com and look at it. I've got pictures of it from every angle. You can see those rifling marks in it. And I like stuff like that. <laughs> I, I've gotten out of where I don't buy it if I don't like it or there's some good money left in it. That's the two criteria. If you want to sell me something, sell me something that I really like or something I can make some money on. And, um, that brings me to what I wanted to tell you guys. I have been a small businessman since 1995. And what I sell, most folks don't buy. It's, it's a certain little group of folks that we're uh, collecting fraternity. But I understand what it is to be a small businessman. Don't hate that small businessman for making money. Because if he don't, he ain't going to be there. And if, if the Walmarts and the Costco's and everybody else get a full monopoly on everything, you ain't going to be able to afford nothing they sell. Support that small businessman. It might be a little bit more, but stop by the little Piggly Wiggly. Stop by the, the little mom and pop hardware store. Because those, those folks need it. They have, it has been a hard year, and those people need your support. And don't forget to tell them as you leave, I went out of my way to come here because I want to support you. Because that means a lot to a small businessman. And if they got a price on it, don't try to offer them half because they got to make a living. If they don't make a living, they are not going to be there the next time you want to buy something from them. Never hate anybody for making a profit. It's not a bad thing. People got to make a profit. I love you guys. I'll catch you next time. Be sure to go on to ShilohRelics.com. Sign up as a subscriber because I do send out emails with uh, 20 or 30 pieces every so often. And it's just a random thing of whatever I've happened to have been able to get in that week and write up. But go on there. Sign up as a subscriber. I don't give out the uh, emails. I don't do any of that stuff. And you can sign out anytime if you don't like them. Because I don't want to be that guy that sends you trash you don't want to watch. I love you guys. I'll catch you next time. Have a great day. You deserve it.